action. Hi, my name is Ashok Sinha and welcome to another episode of The Power of Images. Today I'll be talking about my photo project on car culture and architectural advertising in Los Angeles during America's golden age of the automobile. Los Angeles is the original car city, and Los Angeles and car culture go hand in hand. Since the 1950s, when highways were expanding, the suburbs were happening, cars became an important part of people's lives, and restaurants and eateries were a big part of that. So the designers and architects who were designing these drive throughs and fast food joints used architecture as a form of advertising to entice that person to come in and buy that burger, come in and have that drink. Everything was deliberately planned and designed to capture your attention. We were all seeing the world around us through the frame of the car's window. When you see these structures at night with the lights on, you see the interiors, they really shine and it shows you exactly what the designers were thinking. If you drive by this neighborhood in East Los Angeles, suddenly out of nowhere, you see this massive donut. And automatically, it grabs your attention. It was advertising the very product that it was selling. It was built between uh, 1967, 68. And you can still pick up a donut and a cup of coffee driving through the entrance. It's just interesting and bizarre at the same time. This is actually the oldest surviving McDonald's. It dates back to 1953, located in the city of Downey within Los Angeles. Many of the others were demolished by the McDonald's Corporation. When McDonald's purchased this property, they had demolition plans, but the National Trust for Historic Preservation stepped in and listed it as an endangered property in 1994. A few things to note here. You'll notice the mascot. His name was Speedy. That was the original mascot for McDonald's, and it's still here in the signage. The other thing is these metal arches supporting the restaurant roof structure is an original element and the use of this fishbowl concept looking into the restaurant of all its operations and use of glass is very much uh, true to the original design of this restaurant. Chip's Diner was built in 1957 in Los Angeles. It's a beautiful, elegant diner. There are so many design subtleties that were made primarily for the motorist. The lettering, for example, the writing chips, it's actually in a street corner. So you would have these letters that are slightly angled towards the direction of traffic. So when you're driving by, you could read the signage. There's that use of glass again and the inviting warm lighting. In the interiors too, there's meticulous stonework. There's semicircular booths, which are upholstered in a beautiful fashion. And this was designed by this architect named Harry Harrison, who's a Taliesin trained architect. You can see the teachings of Frank Lloyd right here, and it is such a beautiful structure. It's so elegant and inviting. George's 50s Diner was built in 1950. It was a popular spot on a busy intersection. It was a beacon, so you could see it if you were stuck at the traffic light or you were going through the intersection. There were important features that relates to that concept of being a beacon. For example, this tall, integrated stucco billboard that you could see from far away. There was this elegant neon script, and more importantly, these curving windows that face the traffic and, again, invites the driver to come inside. And it still is a popular spot. You can still get the same kind of 50s feel when you walk inside. The decor is still original. It's just a gem. The Pan's Diner is still owned by the original family. It was built in 1958. You can see the space age, Jetsons, futuristic concepts and ideas reflected in the architecture. This architecture style, also known as Googie, featured animated neon signs, which is very much relevant here. The pants writing actually lights up one letter at a time, eventually reveals pans. There's tropical plantings in the front of the building. There are terrazzo floors. There's plate glass windows. There are stone walls. All of this is very characteristic of that era. You would probably see this diner being used as a filming location for movies. It's original. It's still in perfect condition. It's like the time capsule. This is kind of an oasis in the middle of traffic. 
this location is in Burbank, and it's a streamlined, modern icon in terms of architectural style. The characteristic for this building was the neon sign, which is actually preserved. It's a landmark. But most importantly, the parking lot still hosts a local informal classic car show. The neighborhood comes together. You can go see all these cars. And it's a really a fun experience. I learned about this classic car meet. And I wanted to capture the activity, that relationship that people had with this building. It was a destination. It was a place for people to meet and congregate. This Mel's location was built in 1953. Again, it's a Googie classic. You can see all the classic elements of it, the signage, the neon, the glass, the space age, sloping roof. For many of these pictures, typography was a big element. And if you look at the, the signage in front of the building, it spelled out exactly what you would expect going into a place like this. It's a utilitarian building at the end of the day. It's a box with a roof. But this deliberate design thinking made it something extra special, made that experience special. This is today at Denny's, but in 1967, this was the Van de Kamp's Holland Dutch Bakery in the city of Arcadia in Los Angeles. Obviously, the most defining characteristics of all those bakeries was this windmill. This windmill had stopped working, and so the town decided that they had to restore it, and it was lit in its original glory. And the nighttime settles in, and the lights go on, and the windmill slowly start moving. It is quite a thing. The massive structure makes you want to look. While the Dutch bakery had its windmill, a little piece of Holland in Los Angeles, you have the Wiener Schnitzel, which was a little bit of Germany in Los Angeles. It had this very interesting A-frame, the yellow mustardy color. If you notice, there is a drive through which pops out you know, like a little hole on the side of the building. It was a characteristic of all these hot dog stands. It was a different way of advertising the kind of food they were selling. The building had to be structured in a way that made it different from all the restaurants around it. Even though these handful of buildings have been saved, many are still not in the preservation list. So there's always the pressure of real estate development in a city like Los Angeles. So we might be looking at these buildings for the last time for some of them. And so it's important that these continue to be businesses. And it's important that people continue to visit them and experience them so that they can be preserved.